is covering the spread. Part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It is time to talk NFL for Thanksgiving week from a betting perspective. We're going to break down the Thanksgiving games outline where we're seeing some good bets this week. And then also take a look forward to Sunday's action and break down our favorite bets for this week over at FanDuel Sportsbook with Ryan Williams getting his read on these games and much more. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, happy Thanksgiving to you. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Jim. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Um, we got Thanksgiving week on the docket, as we love to talk about. It's week 12. Um, what better way to, you know, start off the week than with getting three games on a Thursday night um, or on the Thursday day all day? Uh, it's, mm-hmm. ju- it's just so fun. Um, so that's what we're going to be thankful for this year is that we can get football pretty much all week long. And uh, I'm just happy to get after the action with you. Uh, favorite Thanksgiving food. What you got? Who? Um so I'm not a big turkey guy. Um, okay. I would rather have ham. Uh, okay. I, you know, I do love the stuffing, uh, but you know, okay. gotta gotta have mac and cheese. And it doesn't mm-hmm. feel like it's a Thanksgiving side, but like the you know baked mac and cheese, oh. it just uh, always brings it home for me. Um, but yeah, um, wife's family's big into green bean casserole. I really didn't have that until. Oh, true Midwesterners, I, I love it. Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, that's always fire and one of the first dishes to to go okay i want the mac and cheese so um yep. i'll bring the bean green bean casserole uh you Perfect. can bring the mac and cheese and we'll have we'll collab i think this will be a good thing to me i can take or leave turkey i like it enough but like you know if i have green bean casserole and mac and cheese we're cooking so i'm uh i'm on board with uh this uh, approach for your family for thanksgiving we're going to break down those thanksgiving games let you know where we're seeing value for this week and then also take a look forward to sunday in just one second but first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts our week 13 college football show with ed fang is up as well breaking down michigan versus ohio state we got thoughts on usc notre dame also talk some World Cup uh, takeaways from uh, the USA's first match and the Argentina loss from Ed. That is up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and the FanDuel YouTube page right now. Make sure you're subscribed on your platform of choice, wherever you want to watch or listen to those, uh, to get those as they are posted each and every weekday. This is our final show for this week. Uh, no shows Thursday or Friday because of the holiday. Back with you once again on Monday. Football fans, make this a Thanksgiving to remember with FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because when you get Bet an NFL same game parlay from now through November 28th. All customers can get up to $100 in free bets, win or lose. Just bet an NFL same game parlay or same game parlay plus of at least $20. The bigger your bet, the more you'll get back in free bets. NFL same game parlays are the perfect way to combine your bets for a chance at a larger payday. Build your own or choose from one of the popular SGPs pre built for you in FanDuel's top rated sportsbook app. However, you want to play, Get up to $100 in free bets, win or lose, when you bet an NFL same-game parlay of four legs or more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21-plus and present in select states. First, or bonus issued is non withdrawable free bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max free bet $100. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. In Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and Y. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-979. Or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Now, as mentioned, we'll dive into the biggest games on Sunday in just a second. But first, Ryan, let's open up the board and talk about those Thanksgiving games. Three games over on Thursday what bets are you seeing right now that you like over at FanDuel Sportsbook? Yeah, I think for me, as of right now, and I didn't know this until late last night, but I'm looking at the Lions plus plus nine and a half. 
Um, the Lions plus nine and a half, that, that sounds like a tongue twister. Um, <laughs> so, you know, a couple of things that factor in here. I think one, how good the Lions play at home as far as offensive goes. Like Jared Goff is much better at home. Uh, the numbers show that uh, the games have been absolutely incredible fireworks um, when they've been at home and they've been able to keep up with, with any offense who's out there. Um, you know, we'll see what the backfield is looking like. Um, they say that DeAndre Swift is, you know, healthier. Um, that should factor in. I know Buffalo D has been dealing with some injuries pretty much all year, it feels like, um, to their to their defense and secondary and front seven, um, even though they get a couple pieces back. Um, and then the travel aspect of it, which is really yeah. just absolutely ludicrous to me, that the Buffalo Bills were just in Detroit because of the snow in Buffalo and had a game on a short week, chose to fly home. Yeah, I thought so they that can was sleep too. in their own beds. Like, yeah, this is just and it's a must win game for Buffalo. So I do expect them to like go out there and like do, do some things. But Allen's dealing with the elbow injury. Um, saw him be affected um, last week, especially when it comes to like the the rushing too. Like, I think they're being cautious with him. Um, this is a good rushing quarterback matchup, but I just don't know. I, you know, the Bills have to prove it to, to us again for me to be able to take them at nine and a half close to 10 on the spread I, I'm much willing to you know lean the lion side Dan Campbell you know he knows how to coach up this team in a particular way it's Thanksgiving um, at home for them and this is probably like I don't want to say it's their Super Bowl but like this is a big big game for them in front of their home crowd that they could come out here and kind of shock people um, and, and I would be surprised if the Lions did win, but this number is just too large for me to take the other side. I kind of hope they win because I bet the Lions money line. Oh, uh, it's plus 350 right now at FanDuel go. Sportsbook. So the second you said I Lions, it. I was like, okay, let's ride, baby. You're taking the more hinged route, which is good. You should, you know, taking the the, the points as opposed to money line probably better. Uh, their implied odds yeah. winning at plus 350 are 22.2%. So, that's a pretty low number for a team that is at home. As you mentioned, um, they got the uh, the travel advantage. They were on the road last week, but the Bills flying to Detroit, flying back, and then flying back again. That's a lot to deal with on top of all the snow situation they had. Um, there are some key injuries on the Detroit side. Jeff Akuda is going to miss this game due to a concussion. But also on the Bills side, Mitch Morse, their center, seems like he's probably going to sit as well. Didn't practice either Monday or Tuesday. We've seen... This Bills offensive line has struggled at times in a vacuum, but they've struggled more when Morse has been out because he's like the key communicator within that offense. So this offensive line is not that good. And you take away their center, I think that could be a pretty big issue for this Bills offense. So I did take the money line. Um, should I have? I don't know. A great question. I don't know. Um, but yep. I think that their win odds are higher than 22%. So I took the money yep. line. I didn't put a, uh, I put a half unit on that, but like, I feel okay about it. It has not moved at all. Uh, I took it at what it was three thirty yesterday. It's now three fifty, so it's moved against me actually. But I still don't feel. Usually, when a number moves against you, you're like, oh man, bad bet, whatever. Still a bad bet. I didn't get the best number, but I don't feel bad about it yet. So I'm still feeling okay about this one despite the movement. Yeah, it's I, listen. It, it's one. It's the first game of of tomorrow, of Thursday, so. So, you know, people are going to be tuned in. Everybody feels like the Bills should come in here and boat race this team. And like we we see weird things happen all the time, especially on Thanksgiving. Um, and I think the Bills just played last year, if I'm not mistaken, on Thanksgiving. I think they were the Thanksgiving night. Yeah. I forget how that the game Saints. went. The they Saints. The Saints. Okay. I'm pretty yeah. sure they torched them. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, maybe people are remembering remembering that a, a little bit better. But, yeah, I just the, the Lions spread for sure um, is something that I just want to be all over um it makes no sense minus 104 so almost plus money uh yeah. what you're, you're getting on it at least on the FanDuel sportsbook um absolutely love that um the other the other games i mean are very enticing to me too uh, you know cowboys opened at seven it's now nine and a half i mean they can they can easily cover this number with what the giants are dealing with and like people will be scared away but like the the giants you know, they J Daniel Jones has not shown any propensity to be able to stay in games against Dallas in his career, at least over the last couple. Um, this could be very ugly for them off the start. I'm probably not going to bet that line, but I would definitely be interested in in getting some action on the Cowboys. Um, the Patriots, I just am going to ride with them all the time when we're getting plus money on them. Uh, the Vikings, we got the Kirk Cousins narrative on prime time for whatever <laughs> that's worth. That. 
Yeah. Um, Justin, Je- Justin Jefferson dealing with turf toe. Uh, we saw him limited on Sunday. It's now a short week. Like this is something that usually takes a full week to recover from. And we just kind of got that news on Sunday morning. So, you know, maybe they're able to kind of get him out of the game. Um, it's not a great on paper matchup for Dalvin cook. I mean, it is Dalvin cook and he can always, you know, explode. Um, this is at home. So, you know, you see the Vikings kind of maybe finding a way to stay in this game, but like if the Patriots D can show out like they have in the past couple, uh, this could be a long night for Kirk Cousins. So that's why I'm looking at the two and a half there. Yeah. The Patriots, um, Vikings game and the Patriots defense specifically was also a key driver for me. I like the under in that game. It's 42 and a half right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook minus 110 on the under. And you look at the injuries in this game, the two key ones, David Andrews practiced on Tuesday. I don't think he'll play. I think it's kind of some, like a dude could be on life support and the Patriots list him as limited to practice. Like that's kind of just what they do. I don't think he's going to play. Um, right. And if we don't get Andrews, that is one team missing their center is very good. And the opposing team missing their left tackle and Christian Darasaw as he is in concussion protocol and can't get cleared before Thursday. So you're missing two key offensive line, two good offensive linemen at key positions along the line. For me, I view left tackle and centers being the most important positions in terms of like how I view a team for betting. So two key missing pieces there, a very good Patriots defense. They're actually first in my 2022 only defensive rankings. Uh, Vikings, I think are 12th right now uh, in that metric. I feel like I got to just take the under here. 42 and a half is not a big number, but I still feel like the under is very much in play here, given the injuries on both sides on the offensive line. And I just, I can't foresee Mac Jones making me regret an under 42 and a half on a Thursday night. No, I mean, wait, <laughs> how, how can you, uh, it's hard to put your hard earned dollars on, on Mac Jones here, but you know, yeah. doing a little bit better than the kid back, uh, Zach Wilson is. So yep. uh, we'll, let the, <laughs> we'll let the rest of the team carry, carry him up and, and, uh, carry him to the promised land. You said you wanted the two and a half, correct? For the Patriots. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, uh, hopefully Thursday goes well, but let's spin it forward now and talk about the Sunday games beginning with a game I think is sneakily fun. It's the Bengals at the Titans. This spread is now one and a half in favor. The Bengals total is 42 and a half and the Titans. They've surprised this year. They are seven and three. They did this all last year. They're doing it again this year. Can they pull off another surprise here and win as home underdogs against Joe Burrow and the Bengals? Yeah, I, th- I think that they can. Um, I really love the Titans when you know we were getting them close to c- close to three um, because yeah. you know at home that number is just absolutely absurd with the way that they've been playing. Um, you know, and I get it. You know, the Bengals have been able to hit somewhat of a stride here, even with missing Jamar Chase, um, still having the explosive pieces of of Mixon and uh, T Higgins. Tyler Boyd's been balling out, but um, for me, you know, this, this Titans team. I mean, they're really. Um, controlling their own destiny, you know, when we talk about where, where things stand in, in the AFC, um, you know, we got the the Dolphins that are right there with them, uh, the Bills that are right there with them with three losses. I mean, there's a couple teams with three losses and then the Chiefs only have two. So, you know, you're looking at kind of, you know, this is a team that somehow squeaked it into the number one seed last year. Um, and just what they're doing without A.J. Brown on offense and like still just sticking to their guns of, variable saying that we're going to run the ball and we're going to stop you on defense like that that's incredible um i do think that yes i'm i'm with you i'm interested in this game like this was kind of one of the first games i wrote down from a dfs perspective because like yeah. just give just give me henry because i know um where the piece can go there after Najee just torched this team and then like joe burrow can always keep it close and it's a, it's a more concentrated offense now so I am interested in the over in this game as well, too. But I'm going to take the plus points just with Tennessee at home and kind of, you know, what that kind of means and how they're able to rally behind this team. I agree on both courts. Um, I like I was willing to bet the Titans when it was two and a half. Now it's one and a half. I'm probably not going to get there, but I do like the over. I did take the over 42 and a half. And I was my ears perked up when you said DFS. I actually do think this is a sneaky game for some DFS stacks like a yeah. Burrow Higgins run it back with Traylon Burks or Derrick Henry kind of situation because yeah. Burks actually had a pretty good role as well. Um, but as far as the total goes in this game, I just think the Titans def- or offense is a bit underrated with Ryan Tannehill. If you look at the games he's played so far this year, I have um, numbers that measure how you do relative to expectation. 
passing the ball in early downs. And they've been above expectation in five of the eight games Tannehill has played. And they've been well above expectation in a couple of those, including the last week against the Packers. So they're throwing the ball decently efficiently. They've actually been, they've had more early down pass attempts than rush attempts each of the past games, despite both those being uh, neutral to positive scripts. They're throwing the ball, ball a bit more. We know the Bengals probably aren't going to be able to run on this Titans defense. I think that is a really good setup for an over at 42 and a half. So looking at weather for this game as of last night, uh, there was not bad wind in Nashville. It was like 10 miles per hour in the morning, but then settled down to around nine miles per hour uh, by the time we got to kickoff. Let me just double check that to make sure that has not changed uh, since last night when I did bet this one. Yeah, wind speeds are at kickoff right at 10 miles per hour. That's not ideal, but it's also not bad. Uh, and it does decrease as the game goes along. So I'm right with you. I think the over is uh, the way to play this game. I I actually have the Titans slight favorites in this game uh, by 0.48 points. So I can't push back on uh, even the one and a half. Um, I think that that is a, a good spot. So I feel good. Like I bet the Titans last week on Thursday and I never like, you know, there's some bets you make and you're like, I don't know about this, but I never right. have that feeling with the Titans. I always feel like, okay, if my numbers can support this, and I know that my numbers right. probably undervalue the value of like a Mike Vrabel. I can feel pretty good about it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just, just as a dog in general, I mean, Vrabel is able to cover with this team. I love taking them, you know, over the three um, when they're the dog because his record's incredible. But like, yeah, even at home, if you're getting, you know, points, I you got to take that with t- Tennessee yeah. the way they've been playing. And that's no disrespect to the Bengals. Bengals are a good football team. They're very high in my power rankings. I just, I think the Titans are uh, pretty fun as well. Let's move now to the Falcons at Commanders. The fact this game is in the top three on Sunday probably tells you all you need to know. This game kind of stinks. But, you know, it's a a big game for playoff implications. Commanders four-point favorites. Total is 41 and a half. The Commanders kind of surging of late, uh, largely on the strength of their defense. Chase Young activated from IR. Not official little play, but it seems like he will play this week. Can the commanders win another one here and firmly put themselves in the playoff discussion? Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they <laughs> absolutely can. Um, you know, this, this four point spread here, uh, you know, so listen, what, whatever, you know, was going on with Atlanta to start this season, you know, kudos to the, kudos to them, take the hat off for Marcus Mariota. Cause I, I had them being one of the worst teams um, in, in the league to start the season with everything that was going on. Um, Ar- Arthur Smith is is kind of getting exposed to me. This hasn't been talked about a lot, you know, in, in all deep circles, I feel like, or, or with traction. But, you know, this he just had so many opportunities to kind of fix things. And he kind of was just like, yeah, let's just ride the wave. And, and maybe that's tanking for the, the future. I, I don't know. And, and maybe we could look at him being a genius, depending on where things fall. <laughs> but um, this team just is, is just inept offensively that I can't really buy into them covering here on the road, the way the Washington D has been playing. I mean, you know, I, I don't know how they can get their implied team total without, um, without Kyle Pitts there. Um, Drake London has, has shown some flashes as of late. Um, you know, the backfield is, is kind of a mess and really, you know, has had their issues holding on to the football and getting going. Um, so the, you know, what does Washington want to do similar to Tennessee? Like they're going to establish the run as best as they can. And they're going to, you know, have their defense out there and and dare you to, you know, do anything against them. Um, you know, the Falcons have been much better at home. That's really what I I like to, you know, where I like to get them at is when they're a home dog, not a, not a road dog. Um, and, and this line just absolutely feels right as the Falcons have only covered this. And one time out of the last four losses um, on the season. So I'm going to ride with Washington here. Yeah, uh, I think that your talk about the Falcons and their inability to move the ball against this defense is true. It's something I agree with. Uh, their team total right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, 19 and a half. It's a very weird number. Uh, it's in between a couple of key numbers, very close to 20. Yeah. I I would have interest in that, but I think given the fact that it's in such an awkward zone, I'll probably wind up passing it. The under is minus 116, and part of the reason why I would look towards that is because the thing the commanders do best is stop the run. The Falcons can do nothing but run, and now you take out Kyle Pitts. I think that actually is a legit difference maker for this offense. So. I don't see how they move the football either. Now, my numbers, even accounting for the Pitts injury, do think I should take the Falcons, but I'm not going to do it myself because I can't see a path to them scoring points. So there are a decent number of situations where I disagree with what my numbers say. This is one of them. I can't see 
uh, Atlanta playing very well in this game. So if you're going to cover four, that means their defense has to play pretty well. And I'm not going to bet on that personally. (laughs) So I feel like we're on the same page here where it's just tough to envision a spot, a situation where without Kyle Pitts, the Atlanta offense is hyper efficient, efficient enough to cover minus four. So I'm having a tough time there. I'm going to stay away despite my numbers wanting me to be there just because I can't, I can't envision it in my head and I've got other bets. I like more this week. So I'm not going to be sweating Marcus Mariota on a Sunday. Uh, yeah, I mean, like you said, we got we got an ugly slate ahead of us um, for for the main slate. So you know, enjoy uh, enjoy the Thanksgiving slate as much as you can because it yeah. only gets uglier <laughs> from from here. Um, yeah, it'll Speak, be interesting. Speaking of ugly, it could get ugly on Sunday night because we got the Packers at the Eagles. Eagles seven point favorites. Total is forty six and a half, and the Packers. I mean, they might be done already, but if they want to stay in contention, they probably need to unseat the Eagles here. Uh, Eagles 9-1, and one, obviously didn't play well last week, but still wound up um, eking out a victory. Do the Packers have a shot here to keep it close and potentially cover or win this game? No. They, they don't. Um, and, and I can I feel like I can say that with authority because I reside in Wisconsin now. Um, <laughs> You're allowed to say that. Um, you know, they, their their chance, I feel like, to stay alive was against Tennessee. Yeah. Last week, a lot of people would have been really, really high on them if they were able to pull off that pull off that win. They're at home, um, you know, a, a good team coming into your place and, you know, really having some success at, at, at Lambeau. Um, especially with the way that the spread was shaping up. And now you have to go on the road against Philly. Um, I know that rookie, uh, I believe Jordan Davis, the the defensive tackle for the Eagles, he'll, he'll miss. Um, so Yeah, he's still maybe... on IR for one more game, I believe. Okay. So, you know, they, they bring Sue off of the street and, you know, implement him immediately. And, you know, maybe, the, you know, maybe the Packers are able to lean on Aaron Jones a little bit more. I think for me, the, the, thing about betting on the Packers right now is that there's so much tension um, and yeah. concern with how things are going with that team. Like is Matt LaFleur on the hot seat? Like he's had so much success over the past couple of years. It's hard to see, but him and Rogers just cannot keep it together on the sidelines on these primetime games. Like so much is being made out of that. So much is being made out of Aaron Rodgers, the teammate and things of that nature. And like Philly, you know, this is kind of sneaky, a get right spot for them, right? You got this Packers struggling team coming in. Like you've been eking out the, you know, you just had a loss two weeks ago and now you eked out a win um, that, you know, you should have really had favored or, you know, handled that, handled your business favorably. And now you get this seven point spread. And like, I mean, everything that the Eagles want to do, like they can absolutely just boat race this team because, you're looking at, you know, the way that they want to run the ball. I mean, the, the Packers have not shown any, any you know, need or want to want to stop the run, especially with Rashad Gary being out. Um, and even then, like getting A.J. Brown and um, and Devonta Smith going against this against the secondary, it, it just reeks of a recipe for a disaster for the Green Bay Packers. You know, it's 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 really tough and I, you know, was never of the mindset of Aaron Rodgers being a seven point dog and betting against him. But the way that this year has gone and what we've seen so far on the slate, I just don't know how you can trust them at all to cover in this spot on the road. So I'm taking the Eagles here. Let's fly Philly. Yeah, my numbers have this as being spot on. Uh, I have Philly by uh, 7.58. So when it was seven and okay. a half before, I think that I think it was seven and a half. Um that was spot on to me um, because of the interplay of the key numbers. I'll, I'll wind up staying away, but like, yeah, I mean, the Eagles are just good. I know that last week was rough. Um, I tend to, I guess I'm not sure if I should research this because I don't know if it's backed up by data or not, but to me, I always feel as if a team underperforms most in the first game post injury for a, an important player. So the Bengals without Jamar chase first game for them was that, that Browns game. They didn't play very well there. First game for the Eagles without Dallas Goddard. They didn't play very well there, but once you have more time to, game plan around an absence i feel like that's beneficial for you so i think the eagles should be able to play better in their second game uh without dallas goddard i hope that they play better uh because yeah. they're a fun offense to watch and i don't want to lose that so i think that to me there's enough supporting evidence here to say that the eagles are the better team here they're better enough where they could cover this spread pretty easily so i think the seven is appropriate uh for me within this game any other games you like in week number 12, Ryan? 
Um, I'm going back to the well with the Steelers on Monday night, plus two and a half against against the Colts here. Um, primetime game. I think it's going to be on Jeff Saturday's old network, um, if I saw oh. that correctly. Um, so that will be a fun one, uh, narrative wise. It, you know, <laughs> I, I, this this Colts offense. Or let's just say the Colts team in general, you know, I feel like th- their true colors are are starting to show. It was nice of them to go out there and get a win for Jeff Saturday in his, you know, first game as a head coach. And there were some other opportunities there that that led them to to victory. But um, the Steelers have been, have been playing teams close. I mean, that that Cincinnati game gets out of hand. But for three quarters, you know, Kenny Pickett and company were were doing their thing. So it is a it is a road situation. Uh, but road dogs, Tomlin is Tomlin's usually good in this spot. Um, I would love it if it stayed at the open number of three, but um, two and a half, I'm still willing to get some action on them. Um, the you know, the one thing that's tough for me is like this Chiefs Rams game. I mean, fourteen and a half. What like what are we talking about here? I know that Cooper Cup's gone, but like I can't remember the last time like the Chiefs have covered by a number this big. Like, of course they've won by this big, but I don't always feel like they're able to cover these huge double digit spreads. Um, we know that they can probably have their way um, with, with any team, but like this Rams team's pretty prideful. Like the defense is still somewhat healthy and intact. And if we can, you know, get healthy offensive pieces for whatever that's worth, like they could just end up, you know, winning this game by 10 or 12 points or something like that. 14 and a half is just so big of a number. Um, so that's one that stood out to me. And then the other big, number which you know I, I don't know how the other team keeps it close it's the dolphins you know the dolphins yeah. are over by 13 points um but they have been so explosive on offense and you know mike mcdaniel has shown me no reason that he wants to keep off the gas and just the way that things go for this team especially if uh buffalo loses to the lions as you're betting that <laughs> yeah. like they really have a chance to you know make some noise here um i was just looking at it uh where did i have it of course, I'm not logged into FanDuel Sportsbook. Before talking about this, I was like, what's Tua's MVP odds? Oh, yeah. I, I, I think they're like, like five to one. I think they were at one point. Longer than that. Or they're longer than that now because uh, we got. Oh, because uh, Mahomes shortened so much? Mahomes is one. Yeah, yeah. And then Hertz is plus 600. Josh Allen is. Tua's 650. 50. Yeah. Okay, so 650. I mean, that's, yeah. I'm still interested in that because the way that they've been playing. Um, so that's enticing. And then I always look at the the Ravens here. I know they're on the road, uh, but the Jacksonville Jaguars have, you know, kind of been the forgotten about team. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, they're they're playing again, and they're on this slate, and Trevor Lawrence has looked awful. And this defense has actually been playing well as of late. So they could really make life miserable um, for, for this team. And I feel like the Ravens do for whatever reason, I feel like they do better on the road against these teams that they should be beating Um, the numbers four, I I really like that number on them. Uh, So I'll definitely be getting some action in on the Ravens this week. So going back to the dolphins one, my numbers have that at 14.6. It's 13 right now. Like I haven't bet that because my confidence in my numbers ability to handle like larger spreads is not huge. Um, so <laughs> yeah. uh, that that's why I stayed away, but I don't disagree at all. The Dolphins do keep their foot on the gas late in game, or they have. Maybe that changes with Jeff Wilson being like a competent running back for them. Um, yeah. But their pass rate when leading by eight plus points in the second half ranks second in the league behind just the Bills among teams with a relevant sample. So we know the Bills yeah. can cover a big number because they keep their foot on the gas. The Dolphins are doing the exact same thing, and the Texans suck. So, so bad. I don't. I don't disagree on that one. Uh, the one where my numbers are saying something else, and this is a bit surprising to me because I, the past couple weeks, have been like, okay, I want to bet the Ravens because my numbers love the Ravens. They have them. I think ranked like second in early down passing efficiency. They are first in early down rushing efficiency. They are just a, a good offense. And last week they stumbled, but that was because of wind. I don't worry about that too much. I think that's totally explainable. So I opened up my numbers this week. I was like, okay, cool. I can bet the Ravens again because there's not as much wind in Jacksonville this week. But my numbers would tell me to bet the Jags money line. Uh, oh, it's boy. plus 172 for this one. And it's not like anything where like the Ravens have fallen for me. They're so very high. But the Jags are too. The Jags are actually, and you can laugh at this if you want, but they're 12th in my power rankings uh, okay. for the 2022 only numbers in large part because that model is driven by early down efficiency. The Jags move the sticks on first or second down 
at a very high rate. So when you prioritize early down efficiency, they're going to pop. Uh, the defense, very mid, uh, just middle of the road. They're fine. They're not great. Uh, they are worse in Baltimore's for sure. But the offense is not bad. So I think they can keep this game close, coming off a bye, playing at home. I wanted to bet the Ravens, but I ran my numbers and saw the Jags were undervalued. So I did it. Like, I'm going to have Lamar in DFS so I can feel okay, kind of regardless. <laughs> um, yep. I think this game is a bit undervalued in terms of its scoring potential at 43 and a half. Okay. But I did take the Jags money line at plus 172. So riding with the Lions at plus 350, the Jags plus 172. We're trying to swing for the fences a bit this weekend. But I think that game, I think oh, that game is going to be kind of fun. I haven't bet the over okay. yet because the weather was kind of bad on Monday when I looked. It was like 15 mile per hour winds. It was down to 10 yesterday. Um, but if the if I get a read, the weather will be okay. I probably will wind up taking the over on that game as well. Yeah, that can always be interesting too from a DFS perspective, because um, especially the way that Lamar's been playing, like yeah, I, I just think people are off of him, and yeah. we know we know what Lamar has in the bag. Right. Um, so that's interesting. I do think, and just real quickly, as I know that we've gone over what we usually normally do, <laughs> uh, but the Buccaneers Browns game. Yeah. So I think that people will love this game um, because for some reason they always love playing the Browns at home, uh, especially what they just did last yeah. week. Um, the Buccaneers coming off the bye, right? Um, and they're, you know, on the road here, but we know how people feel about Brady. Um, this game screams under to me. Yes. Um, just because of how these two teams have been playing. And also, I, and I know there's wind. That's yes, a lot season. of it. So, a lot. Uh, 20 miles per hour, it's huge. So, yeah, so um, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about real quickly because that was a game that I kind of just looked at and I was like, oh, people will love this from DFS. Let me look into it. And I kind of was looking into it. And it's not one. I, I just haven't played Buccaneers too much. And I've tried to stay away from Browns um, as well because they're always, you know, Chubb's so popular and tough to trust Amari Cooper, that type of thing. But this game, yeah, I wanted to pick your brain on it because that was one that I circled. I went through the exact same thought process as you, except it was it was more so like, oh, I kind of like this game because I, I hate the Browns defense. Most of that was my main motivator. I was like, okay, cool. Like maybe I want the over in this game because two decent offenses, one really bad uh, defense. I was like, okay, cool. Like let's look at this. And I opened up the uh, dark sky weather, saw the wind speed was 20 miles per hour. I was like, oh, that's why the total is low. Um, yep. So yeah, I, I'm on board with you. I think that this game looks appealing. Uh, it's not. If the if the weather stays where it is, which it typically is kind of sticky by Wednesday morning, at least in terms of wind speed, I'm out. Um, that's yep. that's rough. I I value wind a lot for you know stuff like this, which is why I've been checking yep. the Jacksonville weather and Nashville weather a lot the past <laughs> day and a half. Because yep. what better thing to do on Thanksgiving week than check uh, just refresh dark sky weather? Um, Love it. But yeah, I think the wind there is super super concerning. Yeah. Yeah, so just wanted to talk about that. But yeah, overall, I think this is an this is a a fun slate because it's an ugly slate. If it's garbage, yeah, it's like um, I, there's like this uh, there's this movie on Netflix that Nick Cage did called uh, Pay the Ghost. It's like one of the worst movies I've seen in my entire life, but it's fun okay. because it's so terrible. Like that's most Nick Cage <laughs> movies. Like the Nick Cage movie about Nick Cage was also kind of in that range. It was almost too good. Um, yep. Or it's like a little bit annoying. It's like, ah, try hard to be bad. But it's kind of like that. It's kind of a Nick Cage straight to Netflix movie. And I'm okay with that. I can live, I can live in the dumpster. I'm I I was born in the dumpster. Are, are so, you are you on the Nick Cage is a bad actor bandwagon? No, I'm I'm on the Nick Cage the Nick Cage is the best actor of all time bandwagon. <laughs> um there is a movie I mean, the, the movies that he has just are are, are just mind boggling. Like I I know, I know people oh, make yeah. jokes about like teaching a class about if Nick Cage is a good actor or not and what that means. But like when you see his like when you see his library of stuff, it's like, how are you like, you, you know, you have some of the solid movie, like Con Air, The the Rock, Face <laughs> Off, um, Family Man, you know, Christmas movie favorite here in the Williams household. Um, and then he's throwing out things like The Wicker Man and Ghost Rider and some of these yeah, other things. I'm not classic cinema. About. Classic like, cinema. What are we talking about here? Like, dude, what what is going on here? Like, what what is happening? Um, um, he did a movie last year called Willie's Wonderland, where he's like, uh, he's like trapped in a Chuck E. Cheese, where all of like the like stop. animatronic things come to life and start killing people. He doesn't say a word the entire movie, um, oh and it's 
it's cinema, man. I like I was expecting him to say one word at some point is like a thing at the end. He doesn't utter a single word the entire movie. It's hideous, but beautiful, <laughs> which is like kind of what I'm looking for. Like I have a, fr- a group of friends from college where whenever we meet up, we will watch an a Nick Cage. movie. we will find one and we will watch that. So I love it. Willie's Wonderland. Add it to your list of. Uh, I might have to. I might have to. We got a couple. Uh, I'm going to put here. that in in the department of Nick Cage is the best factor of all time. There are some check marks against that, but I'm going to put that in that one. Um, it's it's bad. <laughs> it's it's real good, but it's real bad. That is all that we have here for Thanksgiving week in the NFL. But Ryan, uh, good luck to you with your bets this weekend. Have a uh, safe travels. Have a great Thanksgiving. We'll talk to you once again next week. Yeah, good luck to you as well. And good luck to everybody out there. Make sure to get those Thanksgiving bets in. We don't get an isolated slate like this. Take some time away from your family. Get your bets <laughs> in. Enjoy yourself. Uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks, Jim. And sweat quietly. You know, let people enjoy their, their food. Sweat quietly. That's always a tough thing for me. But we're going to try to do it as we pray that Jared Goff can pull off a victory on a Thursday uh, early <laughs> on. That's all we got here. Check out Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Be sure to check out that college football and World Cup show with Ed as well in the same feed. But otherwise, uh, be safe, everybody. Have a happy Thanksgiving. We'll talk to you once again next week. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 